Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about the custom package layout style here in the print module. I love this layout style because it allows me to freeform arrange multiple photos on a page. Now, as you first come into custom package, it may be disorienting to you because it may just look like this. Or if you don't have your guides turned on, it'll simply look like a blank piece of paper. Now, as usual, when we're designing a custom layout, we can start with a template or just jump right over to the right hand side and design exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and start with one of the templates. Now all of the templates in the Lightroom templates folder that start with custom use the custom package. So I'll start with custom centered here. So we can see that we have three image cells that we can add photos to. To add photos, it's simply a matter of clicking and dragging them from the film strip up into the cells. Now remember to drag from the thumbnail and not the gray borders. So I'll go ahead and add three more photos into these cells. Now this particular template is applying a black stroke around my photos. I can turn that off right here with the inner stroke check mark, or I could modify the width of it, I can change the color of it by clicking on the black square here, clicking in the vertical bar, choosing a different color, or I can click and drag out to my photos to sample a color from there. But actually, in this case, I'm simply going to turn it off. Now I'm still seeing a thin black border. That's simply the image cell guide. If I turn off the image cell guide, or I just turn off all the guides, then we'll see exactly what we'll print. Now one of these is selected at this point. If I click in the gray, it'll no longer be selected. Now once you have cells on a page, you're free to click and drag to move them anywhere you'd like to. When you have overlapping cells like this, you can also change how the overlap works. If I right click in this photo and I say send backwards, we'll see it go behind this other photo. Now I can click away. Now I'm going to bring this back to the front by right clicking and saying send forwards or send to the front. Now this particular photo is actually a vertical photo, so it's being cropped off here. If I want to change what portion of the photo is cropped off, I can't click and drag because that will move the cell. What I need to do is hold the control or the command key down to get the hand tool, and then as I'm holding the control or command key down, I can click and drag to change my mind on the crop. And of course, I can do that with each one of these photos. Now, if in fact I don't want to crop anything in this photo, I want to show the entire photo, I can change the shape of the cell. The first thing I can do is simply click and drag on a corner until I see the entire photo. I'm going to go ahead and undo that with Ctrl or Command Z. The other way to have Lightroom automatically show the entire photo is to right click in it and say match photo aspect ratio. You can also do that with this cell selected by coming down to the cell section and clicking on lock to photo aspect ratio. Both of those will simply change the cell size so that you're seeing the entire photo. With this locked, if I click and drag on a corner, I can resize the cell, but it keeps the proportions locked to the original so that nothing is being cropped off. If I change my mind on wanting that constrained, I'll just select the cell again, unlock it, and then I'm free to change the shape and to go back to cropping the photo with Ctrl or Command clicking and dragging. Now another way to change the size of the cell is by selecting it and using the size sliders here or typing in the numbers that you want. Let me go ahead and turn on the guides here and let's see how big this photo is at this point. So it's about 5 by 3. So I could again select this cell and then change these numbers. If I change my mind on what photo I want in a cell, I'll simply click and drag another photo in to replace it. And again, Control or Command, decide which portion should be cropped off. If I want to delete a cell, I'll select it by clicking on it, and then I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard. I can also right click in a cell and say delete cell. 
Now, if I have a horizontal cell and I want it to be vertical, I can select it and flip these numbers. But I can also just right click in the cell and say rotate cell to flip it. OK, so let's go ahead and start a project from scratch. I'm going to collapse the template browser here. And down here in the cells panel, I'm going to click on clear layout. Now this first project of mine is going to be to print. If I type I for information, I can see that I've already set up to use letter size paper, which is what I want. So I'm good to go on that. Otherwise, I would go set the paper size. I'll type I again to get rid of this information. And what I'm thinking is that at the top here, I'll have a title. Then I'll have a horizontal photo and a couple square photos at the bottom. So let's start with the horizontal photo. Now, if I want a cell of a particular size, I can click on the size here to add the cell. I can also, as I have already mentioned, with the cell selected, I can also modify the cell with these sliders. Now, if I don't care about the particular dimensions of a cell, sometimes I'll just hit one of these buttons just to get a cell on the page. And I'll, then I'll just click and drag to make it exactly the size that I want. And then I can click in the center to put it where I want it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete this cell just to show you that you can also simply drag your photos up onto the page, and the cell automatically gets created. Then, with it selected, you could change the size, or you can click and drag to resize it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this about here. Now, as I'm sliding this, it would be nice if Lightroom would help me line this up with the grid here so that I can get it centered better. Up here in the ruler section at the top, we've got grid snap. Right now it's turned off. If I choose grid, then as I click and drag this, it will snap to squares in that grid. Now notice that the grid is showing me eighth of an inch squares because my ruler is set to inches. I can change the ruler units here to other units as well. Now that you've seen snapping, I can see that I don't want to snap it to the grid. I actually need to get it in between two squares there. So I'll turn it off, and I'll nudge it just a little bit here. OK, we'll call that good. Next, I'll hold the Controller Command key down to decide what portion of the photo is going to be cropped off. Or if I wanted nothing cropped off, I'd say Match Photo Aspect Ratio. I'm going to do Controller Command Z, and let's add a couple more photos. I'm going to click and drag this one up onto the page, and I'm going to resize it here. It doesn't have to be exactly square, but I want to be able to have two photos down here. Now, I want to line this cell up with this cell. So I'm going to change the grid snap to cells. Now, as I click and drag, you'll see that it snaps right there to the left edge of the cell above it. The next thing I want to do is create another cell that's exactly this size. Now, I certainly could just drag a photo up and then adjust the cell size, but I can actually copy this cell. So I'm going to hold the Alt or the Option key down, click and drag inside this cell, and it will create another copy of exactly the same size. Now I'm going to click and drag so that it snaps to this bottom edge and to this edge. I'll click away so I can see it, maybe turn off the guides. And now I'm going to drag another photo up into there. Let's take this one here. Click away, and I'll click and drag in this to crop it a little bit differently. Next, I'm going to add a thin stroke around the photos. I'll come up to the Image Settings section here, add an inner stroke, and I don't want it to be blue, so I'll go into the color square. Now, sometimes I like to use a very light gray because it looks a little bit like a matte border. So I'll tend to choose one of the presets, but then I'll just click and drag here to get something maybe even lighter. And then I'll close this and refine the width of the stroke with this width slider. And now, finally, I'm going to add a title up here. So I'm going to scroll down to the page section here, and I'll use the identity plate that you've seen in every output module and layout style in the print module. So the identity plate, once I turn it on, is sitting right here in the center. If I increase the scale here, we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to click on the identity plate and drag it up here. And then I'm going to change the text. 
So I'll go into the identity plate by clicking on this square and I'll say edit and I'll type reflections and then to change the font I need to select the text so click and drag or control or command A and I'll just go ahead and use my same old papyrus that I've been using because I can predict what it's going to look like and I could change the size in here and the color I usually don't bother in here if I wanted to save this identity plate for use elsewhere in Lightroom or on other designs I could click on save as but I'm not going to bother in this case I'll go ahead and say OK. Now for the color, I'm going to go ahead and click on the override color here, go into this color square, and then click and drag out from this big box to my photo to take something from one of the photos. I'll go ahead and go with blue. Then I'll close this, and I can refine the position of this by clicking and dragging. And then I'll click away to see what it looks like. Maybe click on it, move it up just a little bit click away again. Okay, so my design is complete here. Now because I'm going to print this, I want to make sure that these photos have enough pixels to print at high enough quality. So I'm going to start by coming up and turning the guides back on, and in particular I'm going to need the dimensions guide turned on. Then I'm going to come down to the print job panel, and I'm going to uncheck print resolution. Now, as I talked about in the size and resolution video, my printer prints at 360 pixels per inch. So I've got more than enough pixels here to print these photos at these sizes without worrying about any deterioration in quality. Given my quality standards and my printer, 200 pixels per inch would be about the minimum that I would want to start out with. So watch that video for more on that topic. Now that I've checked that, I'm going to go ahead and recheck print resolution and I can turn off the guides and just enjoy my work. At this point, I'm ready to print, so I'll finish the print job panel settings. I'll go into page setup or print settings and set up my printer, and then I'm ready to hit print. If I'm not ready to print yet, and I want to save this combination of photos and layout, then I'll go ahead and create my saved print. So I can call this Reflections Triptych. Now, in this case, because I've already chosen the photos that I'm going to include, I don't need to save all of these other photos in the film strip along with this collection. So I'm just going to say include only used photos, and I'll say create. And now over here in my collections panel, I have this Reflections Triptych saved print collection. Now the last thing, let's take a look at creating a template so that we can use this design with other photos. So I'm going to click on the plus next to template browser and I'll call this custom triptych. I'll put it in my user templates folder, say create, and now let's go to the library module and go to another set of photos and then I'll go back to the print module. Now because I was just working with this particular design, I'm still showing that design. Well, let's just pretend that when I came back to the print module with these other photos, that there was another design showing. So I'll simply come down to my user templates now, click on my custom triptych. I've got the layout, and now it's simply a matter of dragging photos in. And of course, these photos don't look so great together, but it's a matter of dragging the photos in and then going and modifying the identity plate and I'm ready to print this new triptych. Okay, this video's gone on too long, so in the next video, I'm gonna do one more project with the custom print package where I create a desktop background for my monitor.